wanted to uh, thank you so much just for being so warm and welcoming to Tim and I. Uh, specifically, I want to say, sisters, it's been an incredible time being with you guys. Uh, we've had a lot of fun and exciting times here uh, with the transition and just there's so many great memories that uh, I'm thinking of. And I wanted to read you a scripture, sisters. It's in John 16. And I love this scripture because Jesus is talking to his disciples and he, he's, he's praying for them and it's just a wonderful, uh, a wonderful scripture when he prays for his disciples and prays for all believers. And in John, actually, John 17, pardon me. And sisters, uh, I love this scripture and it makes me think of you in our time together. John 17, 23, it says, verse 22 actually, I have given them the glory that you, have give, you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. I in them and you in me. May they be brought to complete unity to let the world know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. And I love this scripture because Jesus calls all of his believers and he prays for all of his believers to have, be one in heart and mind, to be right. brought to complete unity. And I really believe that uh, just the time that we've been in Southland, it's been wonderful just to see what God has done. He's really brought us to complete unity unity. Right. Um, one of the, the memories I have of you guys is when we started our preaching class <laughs> on midweek. And, yes. and a lot of people a lot of people were scared and, and insecure about preaching for the first time, but sisters, it was amazing. You got up and you were bold as lionesses. And I appreciate the, the conviction you brought, uh, the scriptures you brought, the examples of your life. And I know that things are going to continue on in an incredible way. I'm really grateful for the Hardings, just that our partnership that we've really built here. It's been wonderful. Um, I don't know where Tracy is, but uh, I just, it's been so, so wonderful to be with Tracy. Uh, truly, she's like a, an armor bearer. Like, she's like a, an armor bearer to me. And uh, she's just been su so, such an incredible friend just right there. And um, we've built a really incredible partnership. So I know you guys are in great hands. But I love you so much, sisters. We will see you again. We'll, we'll be back to visit. Uh, but please pray for us as we continue strengthening and bringing the whole church to complete unity. I love you guys. <laughs> Amen. Well, good morning, everybody. It's, uh, it's great to be with you this morning in Southland. Uh, of course, it's a little bit bittersweet because it's, as Leanne said, it's our last day with you guys for a little bit. Uh, we'll be back, of course. Uh, but um, uh, it's really been an honor to be with all of you. Uh, Ron and Tracy, thank you so much for, for welcoming us in. And uh, it's great to, uh, to uh, be here, of course, with the Kirshners as our partners in crime going uh, region to region. Ministers Without Borders, the Nomads. What region are you in? Long story. Uh, it's, uh, thank, you know, it's, it's so grateful for the Lovachevs, uh, you know, coming all the way. They heard there was a need. They said, no problem. We'll pack up. We'll come all the way from Denver. Uh, and uh, you'd never know. You know, they, they just don't make a big deal about it. They're like, hey, we're here to serve. What can we do to help? You know, it's incredible. Uh, Matt has a, a, a slight case of Ebola. Uh, it could be Zika, we're not sure. Uh, bubonic plague, Black Death, uh, we're not sure, but that's a pretty incredible guy to, you know, most people would tank out and not come to church, but there he is right there in the back. Let's go to. Uh, It, uh, the Ebola claimed one of his kidneys, but he said, I still have two. I still got, I still got another one, so I'm good. Uh, everything comes in twos for the most part, and uh, so he can still go with one kidney. I appreciate that, bro. That's incredible. Um, the Fedelikas from all the way from the Southland. Natalie came to us this morning. She said, you guys are leaving? I was just about to let you in. I was, I was just about, she was just about to put the wall down. I could, I could feel it, like the wall was just starting to like, just, just not much, just a little, you know? Just, uh, but uh, so great, thank you so much for coming from the South region. Uh, uh, so many others, so many amazing folks. AJ, uh, always on the sound, coming in early. Uh, he's here at crazy early times. I'm, I'm in my car sometimes at 6 p.m. for, uh, 
for men's midweek, and there's AJ crossing the street in front of me. I'm like, you got in here ahead of me. Incredible. Uh, so, ma so many of you guys mean so much to us. Obviously, uh, we've had a chance to see the ICCM grow in Southland in an incredible way. Um, can I get all the uh, ICCMers to stand up? Let's give it up for these incredible people. Can I, get, uh, can I get all the Bible Talk leaders to stand up? Let's give it up for our Bible Talk leaders. Um, so grateful for, uh, for Rico and Janelle coming in from the Central. Uh, Janelle, Janelle goes way back with our family. Uh, she lived with us on the mission team uh, when, we, when we all got here. 42 people crammed into uh, small apartments all over L.A., uh, we had three people living in our one bedroom uh, when we first landed. Two brothers sleeping in our living room, and weirdly enough, uh, Janelle sleeping on the floor in our bedroom. On the what's that? Oh, we had the two brothers. Yeah, so we had two brothers sleeping right at the bottom of our like. If you if you look over the edge of the bed, there's like two brothers there. Weird. And uh, and then in the other room, Janelle had her own room, the living room. Which was, um, but so much, I just wanted to say thank you to, to everybody. Uh, you guys mean so much to us, and uh, uh, excited to see the, the folks that are that are rising up. Um, yes. You know, uh, I got to discover uh, Michael Peterson. Oh yeah. Uh, I know. Uh, I know some folks will say they discovered him before me, but I'm just sticking with my story. I discovered him. And uh, I mean, I'm very excited to see. And, and he found a, a beautiful young woman who. who, who, who who's interested in him. That's. Thank you. Thank you for thank you for your service to the kingdom. Um, and uh, I'm excited to see what's what the future holds. I think if we were to take a group picture right now and then look at it again in five years. We'd be like, wow, these guys are leading this. These guys are in this church. These guys are doing this. These guys are doing that. It's incredible. Thank you to our awesome and mighty administrators. Now, uh, we, were, we were talking before, and you said you are you're going to talk to Ron about maybe doing a little five-minute spiel at leaders' meeting to just let us know where we're at on, on uh, special missions. But thank you so much, guys, for, for your hard work and your dedication. Um, I'm, sure, I'm sure I'm forgetting some folks, but I love everybody. That's, that's the main point. Um, rooted and built up in him. That's the title of my lesson today. Rooted and built up in him. Turn with me to Colossians 2. If you have trouble finding Colossians, it's go eat popcorn. Galatians, Ephesians, right? That's how I do it. Galatians 2. Verse 6 and 7. The Bible says, So then, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord... Continue to live your lives in Him, rooted and built up in Him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. Is that an encouraging scripture? Yeah. It says, so then, just as you re receive Christ Jesus as Lord. What does that mean? See, a lot of people want to receive Christ Jesus as Messiah. So they understand that part in the Hebrew, Messiah God. They understand that part. Jesus died on the cross for my sins. Awesome. But the Bible refers to Jesus not just as Messiah, but also as Lord. He's our leader. We obey him. Are you with me? We, we are saved not to go do whatever we want. We're saved into a family. We're baptized, 2 Corinthians 12, 12, into the church. It's not, it's not a worldly type perspective. 
Some, some people, if they don't really know the Bible, they would say, well, if you're saved, you're saved, and you can go do whatever you want. Otherwise, you wouldn't be saved. Otherwise, it wouldn't be grace. That, that shows a total lack of understanding. That's, that's, not, that's not the way it works. We're saved into a family. We're saved into a kingdom. A kingdom has a king. A kingdom has standards. And a kingdom has people. We're the people. The standards are right here in the Bible. And, and Jesus is our Lord. So, so we, we are blessed and encouraged and fired up that he is our leader and we obey him. You guys follow? So then, just as you receive Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in him. I, I've heard it mistaught many times, you know, like, hey, if you want to become a Christian, then you need to really seek God with all your heart and then you'll find him. No, you must seek God with all your heart every day for the rest of your life, especially after you get baptized. Are you with me? There has to be a seeking of God every day. What's the first question people say? Well, how do you do that? That's the trick. That's the trick. That's the fun part is figuring out how you do that. How do we do that? with our lives every day, with everything we do, we seek God. What does the Bible say? John 8, 31, 32. To the Jews who believed him, Jesus said. So can you imagine, you got a bunch of Jews, right? Who are Jews? They're the descendants of Abraham. Who's Abraham? God's friend. So can you imagine, you're Jesus, you're, you're God in the flesh, and you're looking at Abraham's cute, awesome little descendants, right? You know when your friends have kids and you, and you look at them and it's like, like Mason and Natalie's little daughter, you know? And it's like, oh my gosh, thank goodness she looks like Natalie. Although she's got some, some cuteness of Mason in there too. But hopefully she just keeps going in the Natalie direction. Um, we don't want her looking too much like the dad, obviously. But, um, but, but she's adorable to us, right? She comes in the room and everybody's looking and everybody's fired up. That's probably her right there. Everybody's fired up. Why? Because this is the daughter of our friend. So, so for Jesus looking at these Jews, who is he looking at? The children of his friend. How does he feel towards them? He loves them. On top of it, they believe in Jesus. So here you have people, according to the scripture, now this blows apart a lot of doctrine. Because many people say, if you believe in Jesus, you're saved. I love showing them the scripture. I don't even need to say anything. I just show them the scripture. How do you wrestle with this one? To the Jews who believed him, Jesus said. What did he say? Thank you for believing in me. You're awesome. And you're super cute. Can't wait to see you in heaven. <laughs> No, he said, if you hold to my teaching, you're really my disciples. What does hold mean? The hold there is from the Greek meno. The French get maison. It means house. To live inside his teaching. If you live in my teaching, then you will know the truth. Isn't that true? Yeah. Like, like when you start doing something, do you automatically know what you're doing? No, but as you start, whatever it is. If you're into swimming or basketball or whatever, as you start to play basketball, you start to discover like truths. Right, right. Is that not true? Yeah. You're like, oh, wow. And then you've been playing for two years and you're like, I think I'm starting to understand. And then four years later, someone's like, hey, can you play basketball? Yeah, I'm figuring it out. I'm learning because what? You're constantly learning the new level. Right, yeah. You're constantly learning the new thing. Same exact thing with discipleship. If you live in his teaching, then you will know. Then you will start to figure out. To the Jews who believed in him, Jesus said, if you hold to my teaching, then you are my disciples. What does that mean? Jesus brings it back around to discipleship. I'm Lord, not just Messiah. 
You must be my disciples. He says this to Jews who believe in him. So obviously, pure belief by itself, according to Jesus, and it's, it's not Burger King, have it your way, it's Jesus King, have it his way. Right? So according to Jesus, belief is not enough. He says discipleship. Then what does he say? Then you will know the truth. So first you start acting like a disciple. You want to start to know the truth? You want to hit the next level? You want to feel the feelings? Just start acting like a disciple without feeling anything. Too many people are looking for that, that like spiritual, like, I, I, just, I just want to want to be a disciple. Like, how come I don't want to want it? Did you have a quiet time? No, because I, I didn't, I, I don't want to be a hypocrite. I don't want to have a quiet time when I didn't feel like it. That would be a hypocrite, and I want to be spiritual. So I didn't have a quiet time. Oh. So you're smarter than Jesus. First, you act like a disciple without any feelings. On the other hand, if you want to follow, G follow Satan, you will feel some feelings right away. Okay? Come on, Tim. Doesn't, doesn't sin automatically feel good? Sin automatically, you get that emotional reward immediately. And yet, how does it feel when you give your life over to Satan? He's not your friend. He's not your friend. He does not like you. He hates you with the burning passion of a thousand sons. He wants to destroy you and destroy your children. But he's going to allow you to feel good as he kills you. With Jesus, though, with Jesus, with Jesus, it's totally different. You got to just do it without the feelings. Nike. Just do it. Then you get emotion. What's emotion mean? From the Greek, emotion. After action. So where do emotions come from? From doing the right thing. After action. First you do it, then you feel good. How does sin work? First you feel good, then you pay the price. To the Jews who believed in him, Jesus said, if you hold to my teaching, then, 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 and yet how does the world work? The world says, first, I want to come to your church, and I want to find out everything there is to know about Christianity. I want to read the Bible at least two times. I want to know everything there is to know. Then I'm going to stick my little pinky in the water, a little baby toe, and see how it feels to be a disciple. And then I'm going to make a decision if I want to be a disciple or not. And you better love my decision, whatever decision it is. What does Jesus say? First, climb up to the high diving board. Turn around backwards. First, you act like a disciple. Then jump off backwards. Do the actions. And then we'll tell you if there's water on the way down. Right. <laughs> Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. The good news is there's always more. And that water you fall into is the water of baptism. Rooted and built up in him. So then, just as you receive Christ Jesus as a Lord, continue to live your lives in him. Rooted and built up in him. This refers to many scriptures, many, many psalms. I love Jeremiah uh, 17 verse 8. It talks about the, the tree of righteousness, you. And, and how does a tree grow? How does a tree bear fruit? It, it puts its roots down deep. Yeah. Right? And it sucks up all that nutrients. And what's the result? Amazing fruit. Does a tree bear fruit because it gets excited? 
Have you ever seen a tree like, I'm so excited. Yay. Apples, peaches, bananas. Have you ever seen that? And yet, and, 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 and likewise, I've never seen a disciple like that. You can go to the GLC and cheer all you want. But being excited at the GLC and living your life on Monday morning are two very different things. The heroes of discipleship are made, just like all heroes, in the dark, in the fog, in the fire, when nobody's looking and nobody's going to know your righteous deeds. When there's no immediate reward of somebody saying, good job. When there's no reward of glory. But you do what's right because you know the audience that is watching you. And that audience is God. Rooted. You want to bear fruit? You want to be built up? You got to root down in Jesus. Jesus is the coolest person I know. In every way, he's better than everybody. I, I studied seven years of political science. I studied many leaders, many, many great guys, many revolutionaries. None, you, you mention one. I'll tell you how he's nothing compared to Jesus. Enough said. <laughs> totally defeated at Waterloo, completely arrogant, zero plan for the poor, zero plan for the destitute only out for his own glory, had to be uh, exiled to an island off the coast of Sicily just to keep him out of humanity's way. Wow. Who's next? Martin Luther, King. Martin Luther King. Usually usually a tough one to, to engage, right? But Google. Google Martin Luther. He, he was not Jesus. He had some good ideas, but he was not Jesus. Hardcore. Are you with me? Who else? Che Guevara, right? Plan to put a chicken in every pot. He said, I want to I wanna put a chicken in every pot. I want everyone to be, meet their economic needs. And yet sin still racks people's lives to this day. The ultimate revolutionary of all time who did not smoke cigars, was not adulterous, was not an alcoholic, died the way he lived, was Jesus. <laughs> Jesus was the ultimate revolutionary. Right. We, we need to regard him as such. Jesus is not, I, I think sadly we can start to, to paganize Jesus a little bit. Yeah. We, we start to worship Jesus the way the pagans worship their idols. Wow. No, no, we, we, don't, we don't worship Jesus like that. We have a genuine love and respect for Jesus because we've read about his life and we see how he handled things. We see what he did. He was a revolutionary wearing nothing but one garment, walking on the Sea of Galilee, reaches out to illiterate fishermen, tax collectors, and zealots who kill tax collectors. That was his team. Like, whoever had a more difficult situation? Like, like you know, please, Judas, don't kill these guys. Please, guys, don't kill these guys. Like, you think you had a difficult time in your Bible talk? Jesus had a difficult time in his Bible talk. And yet, with those illiterate fishermen, probably illiterate, when you, when you look at the, the, the quality of Greek, Koine Greek, in 1 Peter, and then you look at the quality in 2 Peter, you can see that Peter was learning how to read and write. His, the quality jumps dramatically. Some scholars say that Luke wrote 2 Peter. I say he just improved. quality, which came from being with Jesus. But yeah. Jesus grabbed guys who maybe we wouldn't even choose. Ooh. Why? To take away all of our excuses. Right. <laughs> Rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught. What does this mean? Oftentimes, sadly, disciples can look back at their baptism. This is disgusting. They can look back at their baptism and go, that's when I...
be open because it might scandalize them. We've done, we've, we've heard it all. There's nothing you're going to tell us that, that's going to freak us out. Probably the guy you're studying with has done worse stuff than you. Are you with me? Yeah. Wherever anybody's at, we take them where they're at and we strengthen them from there. One of my mottos is we buy lemons. We buy lemons. Bring your crazy uncle. Bring your, bring your druggy cousin. Bring, bring your, your, your other cousin who just got out of prison and is a little violent. Bring them all. We will engage them with the word of God. And we will help them and we will love them. Some will run away from us. But we will run away from nobody. Amen, guys? And overflowing with thankfulness. What does this mean? This is how you know if you fit into the scripture. Which not everybody does. But if you're not overflowing with thankfulness, it's okay. You don't fit here yet. But we want to get you here. Are you overflowing with thankfulness? I'm overflowing with thankfulness that I get to be here with you guys. I look at what this region has done, planting Chicago, planting um, Dubai. Many, many people, sadly, people that you've known in your life before would not have thought you were capable of doing that. And now each of you who is here for that get to know. I was part of the team that trained the leaders and sent out and sacrificed so that we could have an incredible church in Chicago yeah. and that we could evangelize uh, the Middle East. Right. How you like them apples? <laughs> These are very significant and incredible achievements that you're going to be able to be proud of for the rest of your life. You may not even realize right now, but you're going to tell stories about this to your grandchildren. What you've done here is incredible. And I'm very grateful to be here among you. This scripture is incredible because it tells us that Jesus is the solution. If we just be like him, everything's going to be okay. That's what we believe as a movement. That's what we believe as a region. Every person here is a totally committed disciple. Every person here is interested in making totally committed disciples. That's what we do. That's why we do what we do. That's why we work. We, we don't work to live a cranky life so we can look good next to our neighbor. We, we work enough that we can pay for sharing our faith and making disciples. We, we cut our hair so that we're presentable to share our faith. We clip our nails, brothers. Why? So that, for one reason only, so that we can share our faith and people are like... This is, this is why we do what we do. Everything's about that. Everything's about that. Our choices. When we go to bed at night. When we wake up in the morning. It's all about this. It's all about it. It's, it's, it's exciting for me to be part of a group like this. It's exciting for me. It's exciting me for a lot of different reasons. But one of those reasons is that I get to bring my kids into something that I'm proud of. That for a parent... That just, that's just the coolest thing in the universe. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. That, that I get to go, hey, Junior, David, I want you to be just like your aunties and uncles. And that's what I call the brothers and sisters in the church. That's how they refer to the, the brothers and sisters in the church. I'm not Pastor Bob. I'm not, I'm not a worship service coordinator. I would not have left my job as a broker and left my, my city of Toronto. I would not have done all that. I would not have gone to Congo, went to the church there, Kenya, Ethiopia, Ukraine, India, yada yada, seen my wife in the hospital bed dying. I would not have done that to be a worship service coordinator. This is not about glorifying myself because let me tell you, I can think of a lot better ways to do it. If I wanted to glorify myself, I can think of cool ways to do that. This is not about that. And it's certainly not about the money. I got, I got family working in oil back in Canada. I can call them one call, I get jobs. Boom. No problem. 
That's not what I'm here for. No. I'm here trying to be like Jesus, yeah. who is a revolutionary. Yeah. I don't tell myself who I am. God tells me who I am. Yeah. And God says I can be like Jesus, and I can be a revolutionary like his son. Yeah. You don't tell God who you are. Yeah. Come on, Sam. Come on, bro. Your neighbors don't tell you who you are. Who you grew up with don't tell you who you are. Come on, man. Your credit report doesn't tell you who you are. Your bank account doesn't tell you who you are. Your resume doesn't tell you who you are. What you think about you doesn't tell you who you are, and what your parents think about you does not tell you who you are. <laughs> Only God tells you who you are. And God says you're revolutionary like Jesus. That was the introduction. I want to look at a few scriptures fast, rapid fire. To go a little deeper into this. We gotta be rooted and, and built up in Jesus. Okay, how do we what, what does that look like? Turn with me to Hebrews chapter five. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 7. During the days of his life on earth, he offered up prayers and petitions with fervent cries and tears to the one who could save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Jesus cried out to God. Jesus did not have only quiet times. I hear, you know, people talk about quiet times. He did not just have quiet times. Jesus also had... Loud times. That's, that's who we are. Kip called me the other day, uh, our leader of our, of our movement, and uh, he said that he was with Corey two days ago. Corey Blackwell, former leader of this region. And they were, they were looking out. They, they got to uh, that park in Chicago. What's it called? That big park in Chicago right on the water? What is it? Millennium Park. They got to Millennium Park right before the sun came up. And they stood there on the seashore as the sun was coming up over the water, and they had a loud time to God. They, they shouted out their prayers. Jesus did not just have quiet times. He had loud times. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Oftentimes we can put our, our dad's face or a bo boss's face or somebody else's face on God, and since they just didn't listen to us and maybe didn't even have vision for us, we start to think God is the same way. No, God is not your dad. Newsflash. God is not your boss. God does not think of you the way any other person thinks of you. And if you reach out to God, God will be found by you. Jesus cried out to God. As God. People get confused by that. They're like, well, how can it be God if he's... No, 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 no. It's called three in one. So God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. It's very simple. God the Father, right, is, is the head. God the Son. So well, they, they, that's where you completely lose me. That doesn't make a lick of sense. <laughs> If God wants to become a squirrel, can God become a squirrel? So why are we talking about this? You don't believe in God. We're done. If, if Jesus did that, we have to do that. Are you guys with me? It, it's time to totally revolutionize how we worship God. How we reach out to God. How we talk to God. Now, no longer just with quiet times, but also with loud times. Amen, guys? Amen. Jesus wept. John 11. John 11.
Verse 32. When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him? He asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, see how he loved him. Wow. Jesus wept. God makes himself totally vulnerable to us. He doesn't have to. He doesn't have to. We're, we're in so much sin on this planet. God would be totally justified to just punt the whole planet straight into the sun. Yeah. <laughs> right? Right? He, God would just come up, boom, and it would go, shh. <laughs> and the angels would be like, field goal. <laughs> Good job, God. <laughs> and, and no one could say that that was sin. They go, that's legit. That was legit. <laughs> they deserved that. That was cool, actually. You see their faces? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it would have been fine. You follow? And yet he decided to come down as a man. Because he knew that we would be totally alone and hopeless. And he wept for us. Some people say, well, how could there be a God if all these bad things happened? God's more ticked off than you about the bad things that happened. You have no ability to be as ticked off as God can be. And yet, what is he doing? He's holding back. Yes, he sees the child molestation. Yes, he sees the brutality. Yes, he sees the violence. Yes, he sees the rapes. Yes, he sees the exploitation of people. Yes, he sees the poverty. Yes, he sees the hopelessness. A hundred percent. And he's more ticked off about it than you will ever be. You will never understand how angry God is. And what is he doing? He's holding back legions of angels who are in the Usain Bolt takeoff position like this, <laughs> shaking, who have no mercy. They have no comprehension of mercy. They are not interested in it. They're interested in justice. Yeah. Yeah. And they're like this. Yeah. And it's right. It's a, no, they're not in sin. They're 100% right. They're like, That guy might become a Christian. So you guys stay right where yeah. stay right where you are. I want to give Southland another couple days. And one day he's gonna go, go! And they're gonna be on this planet, and every scientist is gonna go, oh, of course there's a guy. Oh yeah, no makes sense. How, how could, what, what, were we, what were we thinking? Like, oh yeah, like mangoes, babies, rivers. Yeah, these things didn't just happen from shaking a box of rocks. They don't just evolve from like sand. We, we have no evidence of anything that they teach. It's all theories. So if, if it's so true that we're all in this nonstop state of evolution, where are the monkeys in the jungle making fire? Shouldn't there be some? Like one little tribe of them, like, <laughs> shouldn't shouldn't we see like one fish with legs kind of like <laughs> they go well that, that's the missing link no 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 every link is missing because God made everything in one shot that's why and you know that's true because you have no evidence of all these thousands of missing links He had compassion. But one day, he's going to have justice. One day, he's going to have justice. One day, the angels are going to hit the earth like Iron Man. You know when Iron Man lands? Like, boom! And they're going to start pulling people out of houses, pulling people out of office towers, pulling people out of cars. 
And on that day, everyone's going to get baptized. Just as he promised. Yep. I will come to baptize with water and fire. Those who are baptized with water, good for you. That was a smart move. Because everybody else is going to get baptized in fire. Yeah. That day is coming. That day could come today. Yeah. That day could come in 20 seconds from now. And I'm sorry for everybody who didn't get baptized, but I'm fired up about it, and I hope it does. I'm ready to go home. <laughs> Sorry, but that's the proper Christian attitude. What does the Bible say? Come, Lord Jesus, come. I don't say stay back up. I say come. Let's do this thing. Get it over with. The suffering's been enough. Jesus had compassion. Matthew 9. Verse 36, when Jesus saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Wow. So a lot of people read that and they don't fully grab what the scripture says. They say, well, Jesus had, that's interesting. So Jesus, wow, Jesus was awesome. He had so much compassion. He was just sad for the people. No, that's not what the scripture says. He had compassion on them because... They were like sheep without a shepherd. What did he want them to have? Shepherds. Discipling. That's what he wanted them to have. He wanted them to be his disciples so they could be trained by disciples. If you disagree, you're having a fight with the Bible, not me. Jesus wanted everyone to be disciples and wanted everybody to have shepherding. Everybody to have mentoring. Nobody to be alone. See, the world teaches us today that we're meant to be independent. In no way are we meant to be independent. In no way. We, we cannot operate as independent. What, what animals are, are truly independent? Who can name a couple? Tigers. Tigers are truly independent creatures. They come together to mate. Take a look in the mirror. You don't look anything like one. You have no fangs, no claws, compared to a, uh, the most strongest of us, compared to a tiger, has no muscles. We have no hope. A 35 pound monkey can beat Mike Tyson. What's another truly independent creature? Panther. Panther, all the cats, polar bears, truly independent. Take a look in the mirror and then take a look at a polar bear. You're not a polar bear. We're built 100% to work together as part of a, a tribe and part of a family. We're 100% built for that. In every way. Nobody's independent. What has independence brought us? Anxiety, fear, loneliness. Isn't that true? So what does God want for you? Shepherding. He wants you to be part of a family of people who are willing to die for you. That's what I'm part of. I have thousands of people who I believe are willing to die for me and die for my kids. Because right. I'm a disciple. <laughs> and so do you. You may not even know it, but there are people in Haiti. There are people in Africa. There are people in India. There are people in, in Europe. When they hear you're in trouble, they will meet your need. They don't even know you. They just know you're a disciple of Jesus. And they know that they are obligated to take care of you because we're part of a family. Yeah. Our shepherd is Jesus, yeah. but we also have other shepherds, we have other leaders who help us and hold us together as a family. Yeah. Christianity is not a philosophy. Christianity is not like a belief system, I'm, I'm more conservative, I'm more liberal. No, that's not Christianity. Christianity is not described as that. It's described as a holy nation, a royal priesthood, yeah. a people belonging to God, God's special possession. And as a disciple, you get to be part of that. That's who we are. But we're a kingdom under attack. We're a kingdom under attack. That's why every year we do special missions. Why do we do special missions? Because we're trying to cover the churches that cannot cover themselves. 
Our church in Nigeria, our churches in Latin America, our churches in, in the Philippines, our churches in uh, Mexico, our churches in um, India, even our churches in Russia. They, they're too poor to cover themselves. So although sitting in this room, you might think you're poor, right? Yeah. Some of us are thinking here like, yeah, I'm, oh, I'm so poor. You have no idea of poverty. Yeah. I'm sorry. I, I just, you just don't know. Are your kids naked on the street at 11 o'clock waiting for the lights to go off so that they can go to bed? That's poverty. And they wake up covered in bug bites and you have no idea how you're gonna feed them? That's poverty. Poverty is not, I cannot afford the next PS4 game. Poverty is not, my running shoes are as nice as the next guy. Poverty is you don't have shoes. Are you with me? Yeah. I know most Americans don't think like that. I know we don't. We, but we think we're poor compared to Donald Trump. We're not poor. Homeless people will turn away food in North America. They're like, hey, I want money. Here's a pizza. I don't like that kind of pizza. Sorry guys, sorry. Hardcore newsflash, that's not poverty. There are homeless people who stand out there and tag all day long, right? And then walk around, walk two blocks and get into their Mercedes. That's, that's not poverty, we're all crazy rich. Crazy rich with opportunities. Crazy rich financially, you have to eat every day. Crazy rich. If you get to eat one meal a day, you're richer than 90% of the people in the world. Are you with me? Yeah. And so because we're so crazy rich, compared to many of our brothers and sisters, we have an honor-bound duty to give special missions to cover them off. Yeah. Because we're family. Yeah. And believe it or not, they're willing to die for you. Perhaps even more than some of us are willing to die for them. Right. I'm glad to be part of a region that doesn't think like that. Yeah. I'm glad to be part of a, a church that doesn't think Come like on. that. Yeah. Yeah. Are you guys with me? Yeah. Yeah. And so I want to I wanna challenge us. I want to challenge us. Some of us are in the, we, we totally are able to knock out our whole special missions right now. Everybody knows your goals. We're able to sit down and just write a check right now. Go ahead and do so, please. I said this at leaders meeting last week, but Satan's done an amazing job making it weird for churches to ask for money, right? right? He, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a thoughtful, satanic campaign where you see televangelists tell touch the screen, sell your house, give me the money, and then you read the newspaper and the guy's driving by in a Porsche, right? Tell me that's not a satanic effort right. to make it weird to raise money for missions. Yeah. Here's the thing. I've been to India, I've been to Africa, I've been to the worst slums that we have in Kinshasa where many of our brothers and sisters live. I have zero weirdness at all. I, w I am duty bound. I love asking for money to support those brothers and sisters. I love it. It fires me up. I'm eager. I feel like I'm doing a bad job. I don't do it enough. That's the only regret I have. I don't do it enough. I don't feel any weirdness asking for funds to support those people. So starting today, if you haven't put towards missions, I want to challenge you, by the end of the month, put 100 bucks in minimum. Yeah. Come, on. Come on. But many of us like to look poor, but I know you. You're not as poor as you look. You like to look poor in front of your poor friends so they don't ask you for 20 bucks. But you're not that poor. And you could drop kick your whole special missions right now. Leanne and I are going to drop kick our whole special missions, extremely painful, but we're going to do it. We're going to just get the whole thing done by the end of the month. Come on. And there's been many times where we're like, okay, it's uh, rice and whatever. How are we going to dress up the rice for the kids tonight? But it's okay. I'm, I'm joyful. I'm fired up because I know the faces. I've hugged the brothers and sisters. I love them over there. And I know you love them too. Today, 
We talked about being rooted and built up in Jesus. Yeah. We talked about what it's all about. We talked about our Lord, who's our Messiah, and that's wonderful, but who's also our Lord. Let's turn back to Colossians 2, and we'll end there. As Leanne and I and the Kirshners leave you, we came in because of the, just the number of leaders who, who left on these mission teams. And it, and it did shake the faith of a lot of people. Why? Because at the end of the day, they weren't really rooted and built up in Jesus. Right. They were rooted and built up in people. Yeah. And so when those people left, their faith just went. Yeah. And sadly, we saw a lot of people fall away. And yet, we've also seen a lot of people added. Right. This is inevitable. This is not a bad job on any, anybody's part. This is simply the way it is. A lot of people would tell you, hey, are you here for Jesus? And they go, yeah. And then their best friend leaves on a mission team and they fall away immediately. It comes as much of a shock to them as it does to us. Because I thought I asked you, are you here for Jesus? And I thought you said yes. And yet you didn't have a clue what you were talking about. You weren't here for Jesus. You were here for somebody. Today, I believe, walking out of here, this is a very strong region. This is a very strong region with very strong leaders in uh, Ron and Tracy. It's got very strong, very strong house church leaders, very strong Bible talk leaders, very strong interns. A strong membership who are devoted 100% to Jesus. If all of us died and there was two people in this room left, I believe that you would kick off a new movement. That's my belief. That's what my belief has to be because this is what I've given my life for. This is what I've spent my whole life on. Everything I have, I got no money, I got no nothing. I got no money saved, zero. If you want to take, take a look at my bank account, you're free to. I'll copy paste it for you. Um, I, I've done all this for this reason. This is, this is why I'm doing what I'm doing. I have to believe that I'm, I'm surrounded by a bunch of revolutionaries. I'm surrounded by people who will give their life for this. Because there's no other solution. There's nothing else. Democracies had 50 years to change the world. It has not changed the world. All these economic ideas, supposedly the world's, you know, that everybody in 1945 thought was going to make the world a wonderful place, haven't. There's just nothing. Turn on the news. What do you see? Things are getting worse and worse all the time. It's getting nastier and nastier all the time. What's the solution? What it's always been? Jesus. So then, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in him. Rooted and built up in him strengthened in the faith as you were taught and overflowing with thankfulness. That's Southland. That's what I'm looking at right now. That's every brother and sister in this room. I know that you're going to make us proud. I know that you've just gotten started. I know that the missions and everything you've done up until now is absolutely nothing compared to what you're going to do in the future. I know that I'm not looking at the Southland region right now, but I'm looking at the leadership headquarters of a Southland region of thousands. Every one of you has been brought here for a purpose. If it's your first time visiting or you're part of the region, you've been brought here for a purpose. You're part of God's plan to change the world, to change this community. We gotta start by changing ourselves. I love you guys very much, thank you.